Today I'm going to show you how to pan and zoom using Cinemachine and this is going to be similar to my line writer video where I did a pan and zoom but this time we're going to be using Cinemachine and we'll also be using the new input system. Alright so let's get started. First I have this simple map here that I actually used for a previous tutorial for grid movement which I'll post in the description. You want to make sure to download the new input system and Cinemachine, so go to Window, Package Manager. Then under Unity Registry, be sure to download Cinemachine here. Click Install. I'm just going to upgrade in my case. Alright, and then make sure in the input system to download that right here, Install. And it'll ask you to restart your editor and just click Yes. Alright, so in this scene, I'm going to add in a Cinemachine. So at the top, go to Cinemachine and create a virtual camera. And so this is going to be kind of manual since there's no built-in pan and zoom yet. So I could just call this Cinemachine Camera. And then here under the virtual camera, the main thing is that we don't want a follow or look at because that's more for if you're following a player. So we're just going to leave that to none. And then under the body, just put do nothing. And for the aim, put do nothing. So we're going to implement all the functionality ourselves. And then let's add a new component and let's add in a Cinemachine Input Provider. And this is for the new input system, so we could read those values without having to enable the input ourselves. And so under your scripts folder or anywhere you want, you can right click and create a new input action. And we can call this mouse controls or anything you want. And so this is the input system. Let's add a new action map. I'm going to call this mouse. This is just a group of actions. And then for our action, we can press F2 and name this pan. And let's add another one called zoom. For the pen, select the action type to either pass through or value. And so then select the control type to vector 2 since we're panning in two directions because our mouse moves in a 2D plane. And so for the control type of the zoom, we can select pass through and then select axis because our mouse scroll is going to move up and down and it's going to return either a negative or positive number. And that's an axis, which is kind of like a vector 1. All right, so then under zoom, we can go to path and go to mouse. And then we can scroll down haha, <laughs> and select the scroll and select Y since we're going to be scrolling vertically. Another thing that we can do for our zoom is under the processors, we can add in a normalize so that the value is normalized between a certain range. You can also clamp it if you'd like. So for the normalize, I could put negative one for the minimum and for the maximum, I could just put one. And so we normalize between negative one and one because we want to tell if we're going in the negative or positive direction and we don't really want the actual value of the scroll. All right, and then under pan, click that arrow and then under the path, go to mouse and we'll actually want to keep track of the position because we want to see where the mouse is at so that if it's in the corner of the screen, then we can pan in that direction. All right, so just click save asset and then go to your Cinemachine camera and under the X, Y axis, you can click your mouse zoom here. And for the Z axis, we'll also click our mouse pan. And if you want to learn more about the Cinemachine input provider, I have a video on that, which will also be in the description. All right, so now that we have that, let's right click and create a new C-sharp script. And let's call that panned and zoom. All right, and so I'm going to just remove these two using statements. And I'm also going to be put using Cinemachine since we need that. I'm also going to remove these two comments. All right, and so the first thing that we want to do is get a reference to our input provider and the camera itself. So we can say private Cinemachine input provider, and I can just call that input provider. And then we can say private Cinemachine virtual camera, and you can just call that VCam or virtual camera, just wrote it for me. And then in an await function, we can just get the reference to those. So we can say input provider equals get component, and then we can do Cinemachine input provider. Same with the VCam or virtual camera. We can say virtual camera equals get component Cinemachine virtual camera. And this script will be attached to our Cinemachine camera so that it can get these values. All right, and so now we actually want to do panning and zooming. So let's make some functions for that. So let's do panning first. So we can say public void pan screen. We want to take in a float X and a float Y. And that is going to be our current position of our mouse. And instead of taking a vector two, we're just going to take in floats because if we actually go to our Cinemachine input provider and click edit script, you can see that under the get axis value function, we have to provide a integer axis for our parameter. 
Right here, this is the vector 2 that's going to be our panning, and it's only going to be returning the x and the y separately. So instead of making a vector 2, let's just pass in the x and the y directly. All right, so under the pan screen, we're actually going to make a new function here called public vector 2 pan direction, and our pan screen will call this function in order to determine what direction it should pan in. So let's pass in our float x and our float y, and that's going to return a vector 2. So here we can say vector 2 direction equals, and we can call our pan direction and pass in our x and y. And so then we just pan in this direction. All right, so in our pan direction function, we can say vector 2 direction equals vector 2 0 dot 0, because currently we don't have any direction that we're going to pan in. We have to determine that. And so how do we determine where to pan? Unity has some variables that we can use called screen x and screen dot y. And so it will determine, for example, if I'm over here on the screen and I know my position from the input we made, then we can determine if it's in the top part of the screen since we know the height, or if we're on the left part of the screen since we also know the width of the screen. All right, so in the pan direction, let's start with the y, so the height. So we have our x and y, so we can say if our y is greater than or equal to our screen dot height, but then we can times that by a value. So we can say if it's greater than 0.95% of our screen height, so if it's in the top, 5% of the screen, then we want to pan in that direction. So then we can say direction.y plus equals 1 to indicate that we want to scroll in that direction, or pan in that direction. Same with the other one, we can say if y is less than or equal to screen.height times 0 0.05, so if we're in the bottom 5% of the screen, then we can just say direction.y minus equals 1. Here you can also put an else if if you'd like, since you'll never be at the top and the bottom of the screen at the same time. And then here we can do the x1. So if x is greater than or equal to the screen dot width, then we can say times 0.95. So if we're on the right side of the screen, then we can do direction dot x plus equals 1. Else if we're on the left side of the screen, so x is less than or equal to screen width times 0 0.05f, which is float, then we can do direction dot x minus equals 1. Awesome. Here we just return our direction. And so to pan our screen, we actually need to have a reference to our camera. So up here, let's do that. So let's get a reference to our camera. So let's do private transform. And then here we can just name it camera transform. And so let's get our camera associated with our virtual camera. So here we can say camera transform equals virtual camera dot virtual camera game object. And then we can just say dot transform to get the transform. And so up here, let's actually declare a serialized field and let's do private float pan speed. And you can just set that to 2 or whatever value you want. And this will be a speed multiplier for our panning. Then here we can just say camera transform dot position. So we're changing the position of the camera. Then we can say vector 3 dot lerp so that we can linearly interpolate between the current position and the position that we want to pan to. And so here we just pass in our current position, which is camera transform dot position. Then we pass in the position we want to go to which is our camera transform dot position plus. So that's our origin. And then we add in the direction we want to move in. So it's direction. And then we can do times pan speed. As so you see, there's an error here because this is a vector two and this is a vector three. So here in front of the direction, we can just cast it to a vector three. And for the last parameter, it's the speed at which we linearly interpolate. And so we can just do times dot delta time you can also put times dot delta time times the panning speed if you'd like instead of doing it here. So we actually have to call this function. So in our update, let's get our values. So let's do float x equals, and then we can say input provider dot get axis value. And we can get the first one. If you remember here, it corresponds to our vector two, which is our panning, and then it gets the x. And we can do the same for y. Float y equals input provider dot get axis value and one. And then let's just do the same for z, since we're 
already here. Input provider dot get access value two. And so let's just call our panning function. So here we can do a quick if statement. So if our x does not equal zero or our y does not equal zero. So if one of our values are not zero, then we want to pan. So we can say pan screen and let's pass in our x and our y. All right, so let's play. So for our Cinemachine camera, I'm gonna set the rotation to zero on the x and the y. You can also change the field of view to zoom in and out, which is kind of a hint for the zooming. And you can also decrease it on the position here. So I'm gonna change the field of view to around 85, and then I'm just gonna move the Z value closer to the map. All right, and so now let's add in our pan and zoom function. Ah, silly mistake. Under the Cinemachine input provider, I messed up. I switched the values. So the X and Y, I put the zoom instead of the pan. And then for the Z axis, I put the pan instead of the zoom. <laughs> so if you followed me and made that mistake, just switch them around. <laughs> and now when you press play, you can see that it pans in the direction that we move our mouse. So if we increase the pan speed to about 10, then it pans much faster. Awesome. Make sure if you're in play mode to set that value again since it doesn't save. So for the zooming, there's a couple things that we want to declare up here. So first of all, we want our speed. So private float zoom speed. We can set it to maybe three. Next, we want to make sure to clamp the value of our zooming so that we don't zoom in too far and we don't zoom out too far. And so we can say private float zoom in max. And I can just set that to 40. And this is based off of our field of view values, which that's what we're gonna be changing in order to zoom in and out. Then you can also do the same for zoom out max. So private float, zoom out max, and you can just set that to maybe 90. All right, and so then we can make a zoom function. So right here we can say public void zoom screen or whatever you wanna call it. And then we can take in our float value. I'm just gonna call it increment and that's our Z axis value that we're gonna be passing in. And so here we can just say, if Z does not equal zero, then we can call zoom screen and pass in our Z. All right, so first we want to get our field of view. So we can say float field of view equals virtual camera dot M lens, which is a member variable. And then you can just say field of view. And so then we can do float target. So this is our target zoom level or field of view that we wanna reach. And we wanna do that because we want to clamp that value to make sure it doesn't exceed how much we want to zoom in or out. And so here we can just put in the current field of view for now, and this is the value that we want to clamp. Then we can put the minimum value and the maximum value. So this is gonna be our zoom in max and our zoom out max. And so for the field of view, we wanna add in our increment here. Remember, it's gonna be negative if we're zooming out. As a side note, for the zoom, you can also add in an invert so that instead of zooming out while scrolling down, you can zoom out when scrolling up. All right, and then we can just do a similar thing as the pan screen. So we can say virtual camera dot M lens dot field of view equals math F dot lerp. So we can start from our current field of view and then lerp to our target at our zoom speed times time dot delta time. All right, so then in the Cinemachine camera, we now have a zoom speed. We can increment the value. And then when we press play, you can see that when I scroll up, I actually zoom out. And while I scroll down, I zoom in. And I don't have those scrolls that travel. So my scroll is making a lot of noise right now. And so you can see what's happening when we scroll out, you see that our field of view is increasing. And you see that as we approach our maximum, which is 90, it starts to slow down considerably. But when we zoom in, we're going fast because we're not near our zoom in maximum value yet. But once we reach that value, you see that it'll start to slow down. And as another side note, I've actually put the pan speed down here so we can be consistent since over here in our Zoom Lerp, we're putting the speed as the third parameter and it works just as fine. So yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. And so I wanna thank my Patreons for all their support. Thank you so much. I'm almost at my first goal, which is a Q&A. And for that, I'll make a Google Doc and announce it in my Discord channel, as well as my YouTube post thing, community post. I never know what it's called. And so you can ask any questions there, except try to keep it not 
personal, you know, game dev related questions. Unless it's a very simple question. And so yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. And I'd like to thank my new patrons in the supporter tier. Thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already joined our Discord channel, you can. The link is in the description, you can post questions, memes, or just chat. And so thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.